Welcome, Colonel Douglas McGregor. Let's discuss war in China. War with China. It sounds unthinkable. The countdown may be on. It's where world war I, I could begin. China and the United States are two of the world's most powerful nations, and they've been competing for influence and dominance in various domains, including the military. One of the key areas of contention is the maritime domain where both countries have vital interests and strategic goals. The U.S. has been the undisputed leader of the seas for decades, but China has been challenging its supremacy with its rapidly expanding and modernizing navy. The U.S. has been working hard on improving its ability to sink well-defended warships. This is because China's navy has been growing at an alarming rate in the past few years. However, China is aware of this and has now built a wicked problem for the U.S. to overcome. Pilots have a long history of launching strikes against targets at sea, but they now face a formidable challenge from China's military, which has invested heavily in its air defense capabilities. China has deployed a dense network of surface-to-air missiles on its mainland and on its warships, creating a wicked problem for U.S. forces that want claims as its own. In August of 2022, China conducted its largest ever military exercises around Taiwan involving hundreds of ships and aircraft and a show of force following a visit by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the island. The U.S., on the other hand, have been trying to maintain its strategic edge in the region by strengthening its alliances and partnerships with countries such as Japan, Australia, India, and the Philippines. The U.S. has also increased its military presence and operations in the Indo-Pacific inducting regular freedom and navigation, patrol, and joint exercises with its allies and partners. The, the U.S. has also deployed some of its most advanced weapons and platforms to the regions such as the F-35 stealth fighter, the B-2 bomber, and the USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier. However, despite these efforts, according to a report by the E and the Corporation, a U.S. think tank, China, has made significant improvements in its anti-access area, denial capabilities, which are designed to prevent or deter an adversary from entering or operating in a contested area. The report states that China has developed a range of systems that can threaten U.S. aircraft ships and bases in the region such as ballistic and cruise missiles, hypersonic weapons, electronic warfare, cyber attacks, and anti-satellite weapons, the report also suggests that the U.S. needs to adopt a new operational concept to counter China's A-280 Strategy 1 that relies on distributed and networked forces rather than concentrated and vulnerable ones. The report proposes that the U.S. should employ a mix of manned and unmanned systems, stealth and deception, and offensive and defensive measures to create multiple dilemmas for the Chinese military and reduce its ability to target us. General Kenneth Wilsbach the commander of the U.S. Pacific Air Forces, said at an Air and Space Forces Association conference in March that were there a clash with China over Taiwan. The first target that we're going to have to deal with is the ship. Because you saw, when Speaker Pelosi went to Taiwan, what they did with their ships, they put them on the east side of Taiwan as a blockade. He also said those ships can put up an anti-access area denial engagement zone which comes from the surface-to-air missiles that they can shoot from their ships. So in order for us to get past those, we've got to sink the ships. Will's back's comments reflects concern about the arsenal China has built to counter U.S. military operations, which includes the world's densest and most integrated air defense system, which covers China's east coast. Like a shield, this system poses a Serious threat to us pilots, who would have to face a barrage of missiles and radars if they tried to penetrate China's airspace. On a podcast in September, Mulvaney said that the air defense system is part of China's counter-intervention strategy. This strategy is not aimed at defeating the U.S. military in a direct confrontation, but rather at preventing the U.S. and its allies and partners from entering or operating in the region. By creating a no-go zone for us forces, China hopes to secure its interests and influence in the region, especially around Taiwan, the South China Sea, and other disputed areas. 
China's navy is also a key component of this strategy, as it plans to operate under the protection of the air defense system. He has built a large and modern fleet of warships, including the Type 052-class destroyers and the Type 055-class cruisers, which are equipped with advanced missiles and sensors. These ships can extend their air defense umbrella further into the sea, creating more challenges for U.S. naval forces. According to General Mark Kelly, the surface-to-air missile systems they have on those Tier 1 Surface Action Group assets is wicked dangerous territory, significantly more dangerous than anything that's fielded in and around Ukraine. China's military has not been involved in a war for over four decades, but it has been studying the experiences and less of other wars and militaries, especially those of the U.S. China has developed a sophisticated network of air and missile defenses to protect its naval and air forces, which are relatively new and untested in combat. Lyle Goldstein, the director of Asia Engagement at the Think Tank Defense Priorities, said that China may have learned from the USA's use of rings of air and missile defense management, which consists of different layers of defense from carrier-based aircraft, has a major weakness. Its current aircraft carriers Lion and Shandong cannot launch early warning and control aircraft, which are crucial for detecting and tracking enemy ships and aircraft and for coordinating friendly forces. These aircraft which fly from U.S. carriers give the U.S. a significant advantage and situational awareness in command and control. China's carriers would likely stay close to Taiwan in the event of a conflict. Relying on the protection of China's Air Force and the advanced air and missile defenses of its Type 0 52D class destroyers and Type 0 55 class cruisers, these ships are equipped with powerful radars and missiles and can extend the air defense umbrella further into the sea. However, they may not be enough to counter the USA superior air and naval power, which can operate from multiple bases and platforms in the region. Okay, and again. But China's newest carrier, Fuji, has an electromagnetic catapult that allows it to launch the KJ-500 airborne early warning and control plane, extending China's radar coverage and providing a major jump in capability. U.S. pilots have a long tradition of launching strikes against enemy warships dating back to the early 1920s. Long before the Air Force became a separate branch of the military in 1947, this mission has always been part of the Air Force's repertoire, even when it was focused on recent ground wars. John Bald, a former U.S. Air Force F-16 pilot, said in an interview in March that he had first-hand experience of this mission. I can tell you from experience in 2007, although my unit was in the thick of considering waging warfare in Iraq or Afghanistan at the time, we executed a Pacific theater deployment and specifically integrated with the Navy and other partners. He said, Baum, who is now a senior resident fellow at the Mitchell Institute for Aerospace Studies, added that maritime strike was a skill set that they practiced then. However, the Air Force's attention to the maritime strike mission has not been consistent over time, and it has faced some challenges and gaps in its capabilities and readiness. That is why the Air Force has recent. Thank you for coming around, Colonel. We really appreciate you. It's my pleasure.